everybody. Happy Sunday. Sorry, we're a little bit late. We had some audio issues that we're dealing with and you do what you can, right, with what you got. We have a fantastic story today by a physician who has reinvented herself. Dr. Susie Sharp is here with us today to talk about how you can, too, fulfill dreams that have been hidden, passions that are uncovered from your past, because sometimes we take a road that other people want us to do and or we think is more practical, like uh, medicine for a lot of us, and why it's never too late to follow your passion and your dreams, and how did she do that? My name is Dr. Elsie Co. I'm one with Lead Physician, an online leadership program for physicians, and we are starting a new program very soon. So come and join and listen to some of the, the content that we have on our Facebook group, Join Healthcare Leadership, which is a public page for anyone who's interested in some of the content and following these videos, but also the Lead Physician Group on Facebook for physicians to, to listen to our recent three-day live. Thank you, Susie, for being here today, Dr. Sharp. I'm so happy and grateful to have you here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> okay. So um, I want to ask you, so Dr. Susie Sharp, let me just say a little bit. She is an internal medicine physician. She's an immigrant from Korea at the age of 16, where she started really from nothing. And she's got a remarkable story. How did she become such a, a well-known and distinguished internal medicine physician in her community? I mean, if you if you just Google her name, the, the ratings that she has, the comments that she has from her patients are unbelievable, five star. And now she is reliving her, her um, passion from a childhood. And the picture behind, the painting behind her is just one of them. Tell us, Susie, about how this all started. You know, when, when did this bega begin and why did you go into medicine? Tell us a little bit about your story. So I grew up in Korea wanting to become an artist. But uh, okay. when I was 16 years old, uh, my parents decided to immigrate to the United States. So I landed in New York City without speaking any English. So getting teased and getting called all kinds of names and crying in school every day. And I quickly realized that, um, that my parents who were professionals in Korea, uh, uh, and, but they couldn't translate their skills uh, in America when they arrived in, as an immigrant uh, without, without the language skill in their 40s and 50s. So they were having to do a physical work to, just to make it. And uh, I realized, realized that if I stayed uh, and study art, I may not even be able to support myself. So I decided to choose a different career where I felt there was some security and also opportunity to help people directly. So I decided to uh, become a physician, but it just felt like such an impossible dream because I didn't have anybody uh, who was in medicine. I didn't have anybody who could uh, uh, help me or even advise me. And so um, I kept that dream to myself. So um, I was a really good student. Uh, so I still did well without speaking English. And um, when I started pre-med at Western University, um, I was having to tape record uh, all the lectures. I sat in the front row with a cassette player and record everything. And, uh, and I chose to uh, major in chemistry just um, because it required least amount of English. Wow. And eventually um, I went through pre-med and got a medical degree from Yale uh, Medical School and finished re Yale residency and became an internist. Wow. Amazing. Uh, how, what kind of jobs did you have while you're putting yourself? Did, did you pay for the education yourself? And what kind of jobs did you, did you have while you were studying? How did you do everything? And so, um, you know, during college, my one year college tuition was more than my entire family uh, gross income. <laughs> and so obviously my parents couldn't pay for any part of my education. And I was in private school for medical school and, and pre-med. And so, you know, I studied a lot, <laughs> but I also held all kinds of jobs, anything from security to research to doing dishes, um, you know, whatever, temporary jobs, you know, tutoring and multiple, multiple jobs. And, and, and you're taking out huge loans as well as getting scholarship and so on. Yeah. Um yeah, you, you obviously have some kind of 
internal drive uh, to, and, and you had a vision. Um, that's how you, I think you made it. D is this something that you learned from your parents or is this something just survival skills? Where did you get that? You know, I think my parents always uh, expect us to work hard, but they never, you know, pushed us or anything. But I think uh, if I stayed in Korea, I probably would have had a very comfortable living um, and, and would not had to resort to all the uh, all the inner strength that I didn't know that I had, you know. But uh, when you're faced with reality that's just really difficult, you know, you, you do what you have to do uh, to, to make it. Okay. Well, let's, let's talk about your art then. How did you, so this is something you wanted to do ever since you were little, right? You ever since you're little, do you remember what, what did you do when you were little in terms of being an artist? Um, uh, I took art lessons and uh, I just did it on my own and uh, it just came naturally. To and you me wanted and to felt... do it? You wanted to be an artist when you're little? Yes. Susie? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and tell us how, why you, why this passion just uh, suddenly revived and, and what, how did you become recognized internationally? And let's show some of your pictures too, while you're talking. <laughs> Go ahead. So, um, uh, you know, while practicing medicine, I started to do some art, uh, study art uh, whenever I could uh, while raising kids. And, and then I joined multiple art groups and started doing the shows with them. And then at some point, I got a courage to do uh, my first solo show, which was really successful. And uh, I started to do multiple uh, uh, solo shows. And at some point, I reached a point where I'm doing 20 plus group and solo shows per year. Wow. And I've been also very active online uh, with my art. And yes. uh, last I'm year- I'm just showing my art some of your artwork here, mm -hmm. Susie. Mm -hmm. uh, I was so impressed. Like th that's your self portrait there. <laughs> um, tell us the meaning behind some of these paintings that you did. You know, what, which ones are selling the most? What, what's the most uh, popular? So, you said the ocean. Yeah. Ones. So this is part of blue ocean lovers series uh, that, uh, that, that, that's, that's really popular right now. Mm -hmm. um, I started this particular series last year because you know, I was feeling really sad about uh, pandemics. We couldn't take any vacations and a lot of people were trapped. Um, and so I was longing for ocean. I was looking for something positive out of this pandemic. And uh, I started painting some things that are just in blues because so, normally my art is in full colors, uh, but it was really well received and people were just finding just hopeful, refreshing and healing and there, you know, just multiple words to describe it. And so I started I painting this. more yeah. in blues and uh, right. it's been really popular. So uh, this year, my entire uh, New York show is going to be uh, for ocean lovers. Um, wow. Wow. That's incredible. I hope to meet you in New York when you, <laughs> when you come to New York. Uh, well, thank what, you. What about these paintings here? You have a whole, you know, you have on your website, I, I was really impressed because you have so many different types of art and mm -hmm. it's not just one, you know, when you, when you think of an artist like Monet or, you know, Manet or, you know, you just Degas, you think of the, the type of genre that they're doing, but you're, you're kind of, you have a varied um, uh, set of paintings. Tell us a little bit about why, you know, what, which one's your favorite and, and why did you choose all these different I can't say one is my favorite. It's like each each painting, I put my heart and soul into it. They are like my children, <laughs> and so <laughs> I can't <laughs> I can't really say one is my favorite. Um, uh -huh. Which is why sometimes it's hard to let go because I put so much into it. But I I want my art to be uplifting. I want yep. my art to be uh, bringing optimism and uh, hope. Um, yep. You know, I want my art to be beautiful um, right. because, you know, there's so much sad news in the world. And uh, I feel like we need to do something to upset the negative negativity. So my yeah. art is intentionally very passionate and bright. I, I love that. And um, I too hope to get one of your <laughs> paintings. 
just, so just tell us um, what is your big vision for this? And then what is your advice for physicians or, you know, anyone out there listening about how do you go within and, and re- uncover this passion again and, and go with it when you've been, you know, living your life a certain way and you haven't thought of that passion for a long time. How do you uncover it and revive it and go for it like you do? How do you make everything happen that you want to make happen, Susie? Because you've done you've done so much in your life. So um, it's hard uh, because, you know, medicine takes up a lot of time and it's very demanding. And yet I think all of us need something outside medicine that will be nourishing that we're replaced, uh, replenishing, uh, because medicine is a giving field. You know, patients come to us with chronic pain, addictions, you know, suicidal thoughts, cancer, and so on. So we're always giving. And so as a caregiver, I feel like we need something uh, where we find peace and nourishment. And for me, that's art. And, you know, for someone else, it could be something else. And, um, and I would say, carve out a little bit of time for yourself to seek that. Um, and in my case, you know, I think joining other fellow artist groups uh, was really helpful. You get support um, that you're not doing alone. And then you just build from it um, little by little. And I think social media helps. Um, so my art got discovered last year by uh, galleries in Europe. They approached me to... Uh, to, uh, with an opportunity to do international show. And so, you know, this year I did a show in Milan uh, and then I've got a show coming up in Paris, Brussels and Luxembourg. And then I have two shows in New York, but th- this didn't happen overnight. It's, this is just persistence. Um, don't give up on your dream. Um, I think that uh, if someone wants to start something outside medicine, start little, but, uh, just keep at it. And, you know, the more you try, the opportunities open up. And I would say, um, you know, don't have a long bucket list. Uh, I feel like, you know, I'm living my bucket list now because, you know, there's no guarantee for next year. There's no guarantee for uh, even tomorrow. So, um, you know, live each day as though it might be the last day because you may not have that another chance. Right. Uh, Susie, I think you know, I saw a post on your Facebook page where you said to me, or it was my Facebook page that you said, you know what, I think I didn't know that you and I read the same kind of books from the same kind of authors. Mm -hmm. And um, how much of an influence has it been on you to read books by, you know, these authors, Napoleon Hill, um, Bob Proctor, Mary Morrissey, some of these, the, some of these big thinkers uh, about our lives. How much of that has influenced you? I think they've had tremendous influence on, on me. I feel like they are my personal advisors, like say Tony Robbins or uh, these people. Yes. Um, I feel like I know them personally because I read their books, their their, their programs. Um, you know the. And the, the hero series that I do, I feel like I learned so much from them, although they're not alive, but their teachings have been with me and, it, and been encouraging me to keep going. Although, you know, you may not see uh, light and, and nobody might believe in your own dream. And you myself, I myself might question my dream, you know, 5,000 times. And yet uh, there are people in the books who are encouraging me to keep going. So I, I, I thank them immensely. That's so good. Um, and you know what? We need to, as physicians, we need to question our belief system that has been ingrained through us, through our educational system, that we need to start reading books that are not necessarily something we're used to. And we're, you know, human nature is to stick with the norm with the common, with the the common path that we all share, which is scientific and uh, data driven, but start being curious about other ways of thinking. And it will open your eyes to a much richer, fuller life where you have more joy and more passion and more fulfillment, like the way you are living, Susan, you're an inspiration to all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the opportunity. How can people uh, reach out to you and, and look, find your artwork? I would 
love to introduce people to that. Can we show your website? Yes. So it's suzy.shop, uh, suzyshop.net is my website. I'm also on an Instagram and Facebook. And so people could reach out to me. Okay. Um, Great. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you so much. <laughs> so if you, if you guys, are, if you have a, if you have a story to share with me that we want to share to the rest of the world to, to on social media, please reach out to me. Here's my uh, email info at drlcco.com. And you can find me also on through messaging on LinkedIn or Facebook. And um, here's our website. Come join us at leadphysician.org. Schedule a one-on-one -on -one uh, with me or one of my crew and, and figure out how to make your life even more fulfilling and be a great physician leader. Thank you everybody for listening. I'll see you next Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern standard time.